Hi everybody, welcome back to A Swift Look. I'm Zoe and today we're going to be talking about Kim Kardashian on Jimmy Kimmel, a certain pub that is getting a lot of foot traffic thanks to one Miss Taylor Swift and Taylor Swift sharing a bit of insight, a bit of backstory on a handful of her Tortured Poets Department songs. So let's just jump right in, right out of the gate with Kim Kardashian, who is back entangled with Taylor Swift. Thanks to Taylor dropping a song, one of her additional 15 songs on the album called Thank You Amy with the K-I-M capitalized. Very clear and obvious direct point towards one Miss Kim Kardashian. So Kim is now back in the news along with Taylor Swift. And Kim went on Jimmy Kimmel Monday night to talk about her own stuff going on and whatnot. But I did feel like it was a very intentional decision for her to go onto a late night talk show uh, just a handful of days after Taylor drops the song. She, I mean, obviously she, she did it on, she did it, I think she did it because she wanted to kind of take the narrative back. And I don't mean the, the narrative in terms of like the Taylor and Kim stuff, but more so like get news out there about her that doesn't have to do with Taylor is my feeling on it. She didn't actually directly talk about the Taylor Swift song. Jimmy Kimmel didn't ask her to point directly about the Taylor Swift song, but she was asked how she was doing. And she said, quote, life is good. So it doesn't seem like she is being phased by these, this new um, song that's come out or these new storylines and narrative headlines that have come out about her. She seems to kind of be keeping it cool. And honestly, as I feel like that's how she should react to it. Like if I was Kim Kardashian, at this point, she just has to act like she doesn't care because if she shows she does care about it, it sort of shows that Taylor is kind of one, quote unquote, one in this in this situation. I don't know if that's actually true or not, but it, it was interesting. And yeah, I mean, this saga between Taylor and Kim Kardashian has been going on for almost a decade. We are almost, I mean, in a lot of ways, it's been going on a lot longer, especially with the Kanye West of it all, with the VMAs and blah, 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 blah. But we're almost, we're almost a decade past the phone call situation. And it's kind of crazy that it's still, it's still a thing and we still are interested in it, but it, it was truly one of the biggest moments, feuds, instances in pop culture, I, I feel, and certainly in Taylor Swift's life, which is why I think it is so monumental for her and such a, a thing that she's really had to work through and process over and over and over again because it has affected her life in so many different ways. So anyway, that's that on Kim K. Let's move on to a certain pub called The Black Dog that is currently having a nice little surge in foot traffic and people stopping by. Apparently business is booming at The Black Dog. So for those who maybe don't know or didn't realize it, The Black Dog, which is one of the songs on the album, is a reference to a pub in the UK. I believe in Vauxhall is how you pronounce it. Um, which seems to be a place that one of Taylor Swift's previous relationships they went to a lot. And now this actual real life pub is getting a lot more people to come to it. The event manager, Lily Bottomley, said that the Swifties reaction to the song and then coming over to the pub has, quote, been amazing and overwhelmingly positive. She mentioned that Taylor has been to this pub as well. No mention as to whether or not she went to this pub with anybody in particular. We all have our ideas and our thoughts, but, you know, it's always interesting when Taylor, like, name checks something, when she, when she puts a specific place or she name checks a specific person. We've, we've seen what's happened with Charlie Puth <laughs> over the last couple of days. But particularly when she name checks a place, Cornelia Street or whatever it is, Swifties are just like, we have to go. It's almost like a pilgrimage. They, they, they feel this, this intense need to like go and pay their respects to that place. Um, and I have to imagine that this is really going to boost the business, not just for a short, like a short time or a couple of weeks. I think people will be, if they are in the area, I don't, I don't know that anyone's going to like int 
make a full trip out of going to the Black Dog, but I feel like people will be like, yeah, let's go to this pub that Taylor's been to that she writes about and sings a song about. It's kind of a fun, a fun little activity. Um, so I'm, I'm very happy for the location that they're doing well. And maybe Taylor Swift should start just name checking small businesses and, and businesses that, that are kind of struggling. Should just throw them in some songs and economy. Everything will kind of, will kind of surge. We, we know that she's good for the economy. So maybe Taylor Swift is the one that can truly save us all. Um, okay. And then finally, Taylor Swift has revealed a bit of insight into a few, I think five of her Torture Poets songs. Um, she actually revealed some commentary um, with Amazon Music, like a track by track experience thing. And so we're gonna, just gonna run through some of the quotes that she shared regarding Fortnite, Clara Bow, Florida, Who's Afraid of Little Old Me, and My Boy Only Breaks His Favorite Toys. So for Fortnite, this is what Taylor said. Fortnite is a song that exhibits a lot of the common themes that run throughout this album, one of which being fatalism, longing, pining away, lost dreams. I think that's a very fatalistic album in that there are a lot of dramatic lines about life or death. I love you, it's ruining my life. These are very hyperbolic, dramatic things to say. It's that kind of album. We've always said, I've always said that Taylor's, the first song that she has on the album is, is a representation of the entire album. It sort of sets the stage as, as most first songs do, but I feel like Taylor particularly, the narrative or whatever the storyline is of the first song is really what she wants to convey about the entire rest of the album. At least that's kind of how I feel. And I agree that Fortnite sort of sets the stage for all of that. And the fact that she mentions there's a lot of references to death and um, just being very dramatic in a sense <laughs> is true because throughout the entire album, it's a very dramatic, very intense album with a lot of very dramatic and intense lyrics. So that, that makes sense a lot. Okay, so moving on to Clara Bow, this is what she said about that song. I used to sit in record labels trying to get a record deal when I was a little kid. And they'd say, you know, you remind us of, and then they'd name an artist. And then they'd kind of say something disparaging about her, but you're this, you're so much better in this way or that way. And that's how we teach women to see themselves as like, you could be the next, the new replacement for this woman who's done something great before you. I picked women who have done great things in the past and have been these archety archetypes of greatness in the entertainment industry. Clara Bow was the first it girl. Stevie Nicks is an icon and an incredible example for anyone who wants to write songs and make music. So obviously in Clara Bow, as she says, she, she, she references Clara Bow, she, she references Stevie Nicks, and then she references herself at the end. Um, and as she said, very much so describing like, our industry, our world, always looking for the next best thing and always kind of looking to replace the older version of whatever that thing is. And in a way, I feel like this song is kind of Taylor recognizing, I mean, she's only 34, which I think in some ways you could say that makes her seem older. Like there aren't a ton of pop stars, especially female pop stars who continue to have massive, massive, massive success as they get older. We, we definitely see a trend of pop stars as they get into their mid thirties, forties, aside from a handful, like a Beyonce or something, start to kind of de decline. Um, and I think it's Taylor kind of reckoning with this feeling of like, I, I might be starting to head towards that for myself. And you know, what does that look like for me going forward? Okay, moving on to Florida, which is one of my favorite songs on the album, I have to say. Um, Taylor said that the inspiration for this track actually came from always watching Dateline. People have these crimes that they commit where they, where do they immediately skip town to go? They go to Florida. They try to reinvent themselves, have a new identity, blend in. I think when you go through a heartbreak, there's a part of you who thinks, I want a new name, I want a new life. I don't want anyone to know where I've been or know me at all. And so that was the jumping off point. Where would you go to reinvent yourself and blend in? Florida, <laughs> which is, hilarious and we we do know that taylor swift loves a crime show we know she loves law and order um and i think that's really funny and she references florida quite a bit in in this album it's not it's not a place that she references just in this in this song so she was definitely feeling that kind of like reinvention feeling as she was writing this album okay moving on to who's afraid of little old me she wrote this tune 
alone sitting at the piano in one of those moments where I felt bitter about just all the things we do to our to our artists as a society and as a culture. There's a lot about this particular concept on the Torture Poets Department. What do we do to our writers and our artists and our creatives? We put them through hell. We watch what they create, then we judge it. We love to watch artists in pain, often to the point where I think sometimes as a society, we provoke that pain and we just watch what happens. Very true. I mean, we we love to build people up and then break them down. It's a cycle we, we, we see over and over and over again. People... Um, getting to the very, very top. And then we say, "Eh, actually, we're kind of tired of you right now. So goodbye. And we push them off the ledge. And then we then kind of want to see them build themselves back up again. And it's like a cycle we repeat over and over and over again. And so I kind of feel like that's part of what Taylor's writing about in that song. Okay. And then the final one that she talks about is my boy only breaks his favorite toys. She said, this song is about being somebody's favorite toy until they break, until they until they break you and then don't want to play with you anymore, which is how a lot of us are in relationships where we feel so valued by a person in the beginning. And then all of a sudden they break us or they devalue us in their mind. We're still clinging on to no, 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 no. You should have seen them the first time they saw me. They'll come back to that. They'll get back to that. Excellent point. And yes, this is exactly, I mean, when I first listened to that song, I felt the same way. We, we, And it's how we are as children, right? We get a brand new toy from the store and we're so excited and we open it up and we like treat this toy so perfectly and we we love it and play with it all the time. And then over time, it just kind of gets pushed off into the corner. It might get dust on it. Maybe if you were me, you start to draw on the doll and you just kind of, you don't care anymore and, and you move on to the next thing. And I think that's how Taylor felt in a certain relationship that she was in, um, that she just didn't feel like she was wanted anymore, which is, I think, a very relatable feeling to have. So that is that for today's news headlines. Stay tuned later today because I'm going to finally be doing my breakdown of the additional 15 songs, the anthology portion of the Torture Poets Department, sharing my my feelings about each song, my favorites, least favorites, et cetera, et cetera. We're gonna break that all down. I needed some days to kind of process my feelings and my thoughts, but we finally have gotten there. So we're gonna do that. So make sure to stay tuned for that. And the rest of the week, we're gonna be covering more stuff related to the album. I might share some hot takes, uh, some more rankings. So please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Follow us on social media and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.